All right, so I'm logged in here into Office 365 and currently into a, a SharePoint site collection. Within that SharePoint online site, uh, you can see I have a nice home page here where I can put links to different things, my ideas, my work, my backlog, my reports. Uh, if you're utilizing Yammer um, for your business communication streams and conversations, then you can post those in here on your home page, you know, so on and so forth, as well as any documents, events, things like that. Um, but really, when we jump into it, let's let's get into the, the actual process at hand. So um, a lot of your projects, the work buckets that are going on within your organization start out as ideas. And so what we can first do is I can come into the ideas list here, and you can see all of the different ideas that have been submitted by many different people, whoever has access to this. Um, and that's up to you from a security perspective to give the right group of people and or open this up to say everybody in your organization, possibly even outsiders to come in and put in ideas or requests for new projects. Um, when you do that, there's a, a high level of information that you have to fill in at that point. In this case, we're using the WSJF or Weighted Shortest Job First scoring method, of prioritizing these requests as they come in. So you can see I have some WSJF scores that are calculated based off of other inputs that people put in, like um, you know, what's the business value of the risks, what's the risk of this, so on and so forth, and it'll calculate that up for me. I can also put in some high-level cost information, estimated costs and estimated benefits that I think I might get from these projects. And there's also a star rating option in here as well if you want people to actually be able to come in and vote on these ideas. Um, the, basically, the way the process works is as these ideas are going in, you know, people fill out the form with the information, these go in, and then you can utilize the information that's been put in to do some high-level prioritization, and when you're ready to do so, you can promote any particular idea into becoming, in this case, an epic or a program slash project, um, you know, when you're ready to kind of push it to the next state from this big funnel of all these ideas that are coming into. At that point, then, I'm going to go jump into my epics list over here. So this is a list of all my epics slash projects. Depending on what your terminology you're using there in this hybrid world is, um, we can configure that to match your terminology. If you call these initiatives or something else, um, then we can configure it accordingly to match that. But basically, I have a list of all these different epics and projects here, and we can see the status of these. There's overall health, budget health, schedule health, you know, so on and so forth, and other metrics that we can be tracking around these. And this is my place to see all my different projects and what's going on, the status of those, so on and so forth. But before this project can become approved, there's probably more information that we need to put in. So right now, um, even though we approved the idea saying, yes, we want to, you know, look at this more, we're willing to take this to the next step. We haven't yet said, yes, we're going to go ahead and do this. And so the first thing um, that I would do here is you might want to build out a high level resource plan and or financial plan for this particular epic slash project. And so to do that, I can utilize the, the one plan resource planner and financial planner to do that on top of this epic here. So the first thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and build out my resource plan when I'm building Building out my resource plan, I have a couple of different options. Right now, I'm building this out by month, so I'm saying what resources I think I'm going to need um, and how much I'm going to need them in any particular month. Um, but you could do this by quarter or by year if you didn't want to do as detailed of plans. Right now, we're looking at this in FTEs or full-time equivalents, meaning if I put a one in here, that's saying I need one full-time person. Um, but I could switch this and do this by percent. So I could say 100% or 50%, or I could do it in hours if I chose to do so as well. I need this particular resource or type of resource for, say, 200 hours, those types of things. <clears throat> you can plan in here using generic resources or named resources. Generic meaning I don't yet know who I'm going to need. I might just put in a generic like developer row here. Or in this case, I can actually plan by teams as well. I think I'm going to need a particular team, team one or my infrastructure team or something like that for a particular period of time. And or if you already know I'm going to need, you know, Lori Weston on this project, then I can go ahead and plan with actual named resources right from here as well. As you're planning, you'll notice it's highlighting things in red, yellow, green, and such, so you can see um, where you're going to have over allocations, where you're going to have issues as you start to do this planning, so you can try to plan around that a little bit more up front. <clears throat> Once you have your resource plan together, then you can go ahead and build out your budget if you choose to do so. And the very first step of that is you probably want to get your labor costs. And so to do that, I can simply come here and hit import and import from that resource plan that I just created 
and it will then calculate out all of my labor costs for me based off of that resource plan and blended rates that I would have set up beforehand. Um, so I don't have to try to do that calculation outside the system in an Excel spreadsheet or something like that and then come in here and plug it in. Just saves me some time, gets me my labor costs. From there, then I can key in any of my other different cost categories needed. For example, things like materials and supplies, travels and expenses, contract software, other. And this is all configurable. So we would match this to your cost categories. Um, and then we can group this up into different ways like capital expenses and operational expenses, as you can see here, if need be. This is very much an online Excel spreadsheet type of a uh, interface. So I could come in here and I can just key in all those other costs and then that's all going to roll up to give me um, a total here budget up at the top. So it's saying to do this particular support customers using mobile Epic slash project, I'm going to need about $761,000 to do so based off of that resource plan and any of the other costs that I've then added in. So now we have more information around this project, right? We can better understand um, the resources, the financials around it, you know, what it's going to take to do this, what's the scope of both the resource and the financial requirements. Um, I have some basic information around this epic as well as I can build out a business case um, and such around these different items. And now I'm ready to go and do my portfolio analysis and do some prioritization and figure out really what am I going to do, when am I going to to be able to do it within the resource and cost constraints that I have. So to do that, I'm going to go into the portfolio analysis module here. And so this would be done more by like a portfolio manager or maybe even a, a group of like a steering committee, something like that. Um, it's going to review all of these different uh, requests that are coming in against all of the different projects that are already actively going on. And I'm going to do some what if analysis here and figure out how I can mush these new things in without pushing us over our budget constraints and our resource constraints. And so to do that, I'm now here on the uh, portfolio view and I'm simply going to put this into a full screen mode so we have a little bit more room to, to look at things here. And so what this is now showing me is all of those projects and epics and such. In this case, I have it grouped up by portfolio. And you can see some of those KPI indicators that we're looking at here as well. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch my view um, to my prioritization view. And we can go in and start doing some prioritization on this guy. <clears throat> so now that I'm here on my prioritization view, um, you can see those different metrics that we might be tracking. In this case, in this view, we have it set to do a little bit more traditional scoring method instead of WSJF. You can see here I'm using things like strategic alignment and how much is this going to help lower my costs and improve employee retention and risk to generate out my prioritization score over here. But I can also include other things in my view, you know, depending on what I want to see while I'm making these prioritization choices, things like what's the budget and what's the benefits of these guys. I could include other financial metrics here possibly, like say IRR or NPV or ROI, whatever I might want. Um, as I'm doing this so that when I'm doing my prioritization, I have some relevant information in front of me to help me make those choices, right? So I'll flip this into prioritization mode and now I can simply just drag and drop to update prioritization. So if I see, hey, there's a high score one way down here, this white phones one should probably be bumped up and I can come here and I can drag and drop and move that up to the proper place that I might want it. And I go, oh, the CEO though really wants this Fabricam one done even though it's not the highest prioritization score maybe, maybe I want to drag that up. And oh, this one's a compliance project. We have to do this even though it's not as high, you know, so on and so forth. And so you can drag and drop and create a stacked rank of all of your different projects with the highest ranked ones at the top, the lowest ranked ones down here at the bottom. And that's kind of the first step of this, figuring out what are your priorities. And as new things come in, you can continue to readjust this, um, say every month, every quarter, as frequently as you want to do so you can come back and revisit these plans and then make adjustments as needed. Once you've done that, now we need to overlay some of our constraints on top of this. This is all great. These are our priorities and people are asking these things to be done within specific periods of time. But how is that going to affect our constraints? The first constraint being dollars. We only have so much money, so much budget to go and do these projects. Um, let's see how that's going to work out. So um, what this is doing in this bottom screen now then is it's showing all those same projects here and it's showing their budgets and it's summing that up across the top here. So we can see if we do all of these projects, when people are asking for them to be done, 
this is how much we're going to spend. And right now I'm looking at it by month, but I can switch this over to be by quarter or by year if need be, depending on what level of detail I want. I can then create a target. For example, in 2019, I have a target budget of a certain amount of dollars, right? We can only spend across all of these projects that we're looking at here or this portfolio or this department. If I had filtered this down just to show a specific group of projects, we only have a specific budget. Um, in any given period of time. And so now you can see when I overlay that target here, it's gonna then show me where I'm over, where I'm under. For example, in June, I only have $400,000 in my budget to spend for all these projects, but I'm currently projected at 552,000. So that's gonna be a problem. So now what I need to do is some what if analysis to figure out how I'm gonna resolve these budget issues. The first thing that I can do is I can come down to the bottom or the lower priority items down here at the bottom here, and I can simply start to uncheck these. And as I do that, that's saying, what if we don't do this and or we put it on hold if it was already an active project, for example. That basically reloads the grid down here at the bottom and updates this accordingly. And so as I continue to check off more of these, more of these guys are going to go green here and we're going to start to resolve some of our budget issues because we're just simply doing less things. I can then recheck those there and say, well, if that's not an option, it's not a matter of doing it or not, it's just a matter of when, then I can open up my Gantt over here on the side, my timeline view of this, and maybe I'll zoom out a little bit to show this by a quarter here. And I can still come to some of these lower priority items and go, okay, what if I move this out, you know, one quarter, two quarters, whatever it might be, and I stagger these a little bit more so we're not doing all of them at the same time. That's another way that I can and resolve some of my constraint conflicts down here, my budget conflicts in this case, right? Um, then at the same time, I can also look at this from a resource perspective. So maybe um, my main constraint isn't budget and or um, I want to do both. I need to make sure I'm within my budget and my resources. And I can do all the same types of things here, but while looking at my resource constraints. So I can see all my resources and where there's reds or that there's gonna be issues over allocations of particular resources. And again, I can check and uncheck the boxes here to say, what if I don't do this, you know, as well as drag and drop to move things around to, to see how that's going to affect my resources. Right now, I'm looking at a very detailed view, each individual resource, but you could group this up, say, by business unit or by role and see, okay, you know, where are my kind of higher level constraints? I'm going to have issues with my business analyst within December, January, and February in my current plan. How can we fix that and my developers, you know, and so on and so forth here. So there's different ways that you can look at this as you're doing it. Once you get a scenario that you like, you know, a plan that's going to work where you're staying within your budget and your resource constraints or pretty close to it anyway, you can come here and you can save that as a scenario and then you can come back to it at any point. And maybe I save a couple scenarios. Scenario A, we're going to not do these five lower priority things. Scenario B, we're just going to push them out two quarters or whatever it might be. And then we as a business can make that choice of which scenario we're going to go with and then commit to that and move on to the next step. <clears throat> also here within the portfolio analysis module, I can flip over into my Kanban board. So within my Kanban board, uh, this isn't a Kanban board of like tasks and backlog items and things like that. This is a Kanban board of my actual projects slash epics that are going on right now. And so I can visually see all of these higher level projects, what status they're in. Um, I have it colored here by overall health. So you can see if it's red, then it's off track. If it's yellow, um, then it's at risk. If it's green, then it's on track, that kind of a thing. And you can see we can do things here like totals. Right now I'm totaling up budget up to the top, but maybe instead of budget, I want to total up you know, benefits instead. So you can kind of flip these things on the fly and even group these different ways. Maybe I want to group this up by business units so I can see which ones are going on in which business unit or group these up by program or whatever it might be. You can flip to different views here to show uh, the Kanban board different ways that you might want to visually see those things. So that's a very useful way of visualizing where your projects are at and how they're organized as well as then you can drag and drop to align things in this case say to different programs or update priorities or statuses or whatever it might be very quick and easy. There's also a very high level roadmap view in here and the roadmap is configurable as well. So right now I have it grouped up by stage but again I could group this up by other things here. I have it colored by overall health so again if it's red it's off track, yellow at risk, green is on track. You can also see my progress percentage on these guys here with the little colored shading on the on each one of these bars to see how far into this we are so far. 
Um, and there's dependencies that show here. So you can create dependencies between your different projects and epics. And you can see these lines here. And if I hover over it, it'll tell me what it's connecting to. So I can visualize those dependencies within my roadmap. Um, right now I'm looking at it by month, but again, I could do this by quarter or by year or even more detailed by week if I wanted to. And then once I get it the way I want it, I can either print this out and or there's Power BI reports that I can utilize and distribute to people that look very similar to this and show the timeline slash roadmap as well. Um, right from here, you can also get to your dashboards and reports. So as these projects are actually being executed on um, and you want to visualize some of those Power BI reports you don't have to leave and go somewhere else to do that you can do so right from here so there's a pre-built report pack that shows you all different types of information around these different projects that are going on everything from an overall summary of my projects and some red yellow green indicators on those kpis and budgets and forecast actuals you know whatever you might be tracking around these there's some templatized reports here you can start from um, as well as I can look at other things like my resources and see how my resources are doing um, and so on and so forth here and everything all the way down into more detailed information like say issues and risks like I want a risk matrix of all the risks across all these projects and such it's all built into this templatized report pack which then can be tweaked you can you know change how things are grouped and filtered and add in some of your custom fields uh, and or add all you know whole new reports if there's some specific things that you're looking to report off of out of all this great data so once you have your roadmap built and you've done your portfolio analysis and you figured out what you're going to do and when you want to do it so far we've done only top-down planning meaning we've done very high level planning uh, capacity and demand out into the future and budgeting and so on and so forth uh, we haven't really got into the more detailed execution planning on these things yet and I'm going to put this back into full screen mode here and so um, to do that I can come in and I can go <coughs> you can see here <coughs> excuse me you can see here um, that these different projects um, each one can be managed using different execution tools so for example some of these projects can be managed using project desktop project desktop professional um, some of these you'll see are using Jira uh, and or teams and project desktop you can actually use a combined set of different tools this particular one um, is using project desktop and Azure DevOps to manage the execution side of all the different work that's going on so meaning you can have some projects that are using just agile tools some that are using more waterfall scheduling tools or even hybrid projects that are using a mixture of both you can use that all um, right from here I'm gonna go into one of these projects that's doing just such a, a hybrid project so to say and I'm gonna go into my support customers using mobile project here <clears throat> and I'll show you a little bit more of how that works so when I come into here um, you'll see I'm on the the work plan tab here and the work type is task and so what you can do is you can build out your work plan either using the new project for the web that just recently came out uh, that was launched during this last ignite um, that Jim mentioned a little bit or you could use project professional desktop to build out your schedule and then publish that into here in this case that you'll see that this particular project is connected to project professional and so that's where all these different tasks and such come from and then people can start to update their status on them as well as possibly track time if you want to use the timesheet capability built in here at the same time I can flip to my backlog work type and so these particular backlog items that you're seeing here features user stories tasks bugs and such are actually rolling in from azure devops so you'll see that the this is integrated to azure devops and it's rolling in all that work so you can get visibility into the backlog the status of these items um, as well as if need be you can track time on these and so on and so forth as well just like those waterfall tasks that you saw earlier and so you could use one or the other you might just use azure devops for some of them and let all that status roll up or you could use um, a waterfall tool like project desktop project professional or even a lighter weight scheduling tool like the office 365 planner and still let all that work roll up into one portfolio so you have one place to go to see the status of all your different projects and report off of them and so on and so forth <clears throat> Um, on the top of all that you can also look at resource capacity so if I'm more of a resource manager role in our organization I can come in and I can see um, you know which resources are working on what who's over allocated who's not regardless of what methodology you're actually 
actually executing on the work because we have those high level resource capacity plans as long as we're keeping those relatively up to date we can get a better picture of who's working on what what's upcoming um, and who's over allocated and not within any particular period of time here so for example daniel williams is over allocated in the first four months here and the reason being is because he has four different projects going on at the same time maybe we need to get him some help and so i can drag and drop and move things around and make adjustments from here as more of a resource manager role as need be so as jim mentioned though all of these great capabilities that we just looked at as we went through all this are all available through teams as well so if your organization has adopted teams is utilizing teams and or just certain user groups are using teams and they want to work with all of these great capabilities we just saw through teams we can do that as well so here i'm logged into teams um, and i'm in my epmo team that we have set up here with a lot of these great capabilities so the first thing that you'll see is there's a conversation stream here so if you want to make use of the team's conversation streams and other things like i might want to use files to store all of my templates here and make that available to people instead of and or in place or and or you know at the same time as throwing them on that home page of that sharepoint site we can do those types of things here as well remember that ideas list that I went into and we looked at you know a place where people could put in all of their different ideas and submit those and then we could do prioritization on those and such um, using that SharePoint list so this is still powered by SharePoint but it's showing here in teams and it's not just a you know a picture of it or anything like that this is a live working list that I can come and create a new idea from update status um, and come here and do things like convert those into programs and epics like I showed earlier all of the things that we just saw over um, in one plan for portfolio management, whether it be the resource planning, the financial planning, the portfolio analysis, so on and so forth, all of those same capabilities that we just saw and went through with the what if analysis and the Kanban board and all that, those are actually all available right here through Teams as well if I choose to work through Teams instead, if I like that experience um, on, on top of this. And again, this isn't just a picture of things. This is live working. I could come in and switch to my Kanban board and go into my roadmap or whatever I might want to do all right here, right from within Teams as well, if I want to work that way. Um, and the same with those Power BI dashboards and such as well. That's all really built into this. And then from there, you can add as many tabs as you want. As Jim mentioned, um, there's a whole plethora of different tools that you might be using to manage your projects, whether that's Jira or whether um, you have reports and Power BI or you've built you know, Power Apps to help support this process or whatever other tools you might be using, you can come in and add in tabs in this team to those other things. So um, you have one place to go to really get access to all the different tools and capabilities needed to manage and execute on these different projects all here from one place. Um, while tying in all of the other great capabilities like chat um, and calls and things I can do and I can act on right from here instead of having to go somewhere separate to, to go do that as we're actually working on these different projects and I'm communicating with people and getting status updates and, and whatever it might be. One more thing I'll show you right here is if I flip into say my Power BI reports tab, uh, those same reports that we were looking at earlier can be all accessible right through here through within teams as well so if i'm a manager or someone like that and i need to get access to reports this is a nice way to share those with people post it into a tab in a team and then people can come in and they can get access to all those reports that way if that makes sense so teams can really be the the window or the user experience that kind of ties all of these different capabilities and applications that you're using to work on all your projects together as well as adding on some communication and collaboration features on top of it 